Welcome to Anchor Community Church. It is so great that we get to worship together. Um, I hope that everyone is doing well and I hope that you are having a good week um, and having a restful weekend. Uh, so before we go into a time of worship, let us first pray together. Father God, Lord, we come before you and we want to thank you for your faithfulness always, God. Um, we thank you for this new day you've given us, God, um, another Sunday where we can come together and we can rest. Lord, we know it's not the same. Um, we know that things are different. Uh, and I, we know that you know that too, God. And um, it's often hard. Uh, but God, we trust that you are doing something with this time. We trust that not blindly, God. We trust that because you've proven yourself over and over in every season of our lives, God. When it's easy, when it's hard, when things are difficult, when things don't make sense, you've always come through. You've always shown that there's a reason. Or you've always proven that, God, you can turn anything bad into something good. So, God, we await for you. We trust in you, God. We pray to you, Lord, and we thank you that we still get to worship together, even when it's hard. We love you, Jesus, and we pray all these things in your name. Amen. In Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I'll stand. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood. of Christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home
Good morning, Anchor Community Church. My name is Pastor Ben. Um, welcome uh, to our stream. Uh, our purpose statement here at Anchor is to make gospel-centered disciples in community, on mission, uh, to the glory of God. Um, so those of you who were with us last week, you know that last week was our very first outdoor service. And I just want to say a big thank you to all the volunteers who made that happen, uh, who worked really hard. And, you know, I think um, all of us who were able to be there were really blessed by the service. So thank you, volunteers. Um, so this is our plan right now, is that um, we're going to do the outdoor service every other week. Okay, so today is um, regular online service at 11.15 um, Sunday morning. Next Sunday is going to be our next outdoor service, uh, which will be at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, at the parking lot of our mother church, FEC Diamond Bar. 
And so the registration for next Sunday's outdoor service will be open today at 2 o'clock p.m. on our website on the COVID page. And so la like last time, the registration will be limited to the first 50 registrations. And if you go to the website there, you'll see all the safety regulations and requirements. So please look at that carefully. Um, and again, I just want to say, you know, if, if you're not comfortable coming to the outdoor service, um, you know, please do not feel any pressure to come. It will be streamed um, online um, on that website as well, um, our YouTube channel. Um, so as always, um, if you have any prayer requests, um, if you'd like to join one of our groups that, that are meeting, uh, fill out that online connection card on our website. Um, I just want to remind you that groups are always open for new people. I know it's kind of hard to join an online group. But I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're not in a group, um, check out a group. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's important um, to have people that you can uh, talk to about uh, anything and, and following Jesus together. So fill out that card if you're interested. Um, also, if you would like to give for those um, of you who are able, the giving page is on our website. Um, if you're new, you know, please don't feel any pressure to give. Um, so let me let me just pray. Dear God, Lord, we once again thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Um, Lord, I pray that you would just um, focus us, Lord, as we, you know, even if we're just watching this um, in our room or in our, in our living room, God, help us to focus and worship you um, and, and hear from you through your word and respond in songs. And so, Lord, we pray that you would be with us during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Anchor Community Church. Good to see you all. It's been a couple of years. Uh, if you remember, I was part of a dating and marriage seminar that my wife and I came and joined you just before you actually launched Anchor Community Church. I have a longtime friendship with Pastor Ben, and I also have Albert Tang in one of my classes currently at Talbot. So it's good to be with you today on this Sunday. Today, what I want to encourage you in is as we think about our current situation of pandemic lockdown, there's a lot of instability in our lives. There's a lot of unsettling thoughts, especially in regards to the future. When will we open up? Will we open up? And what will the new norm look like? I don't know about you, but I could easily get anxious. And I think when we get anxious, the scripture is pretty clear what we should be doing. And that is we need to pray. So today what I'd like to do in our time together is I'd like to take us through a passage in the Word of God from the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. And in so doing, I'd like to challenge us with the title of our sermon today, which is simply, Pray First. Would you bow with me as we begin our time together? Thank you for this opportunity to connect. Thank you for the Anchor Community Church for Pastor Ben and for the leaders, and I ask that you'd watch over them during this time. And as we are reminded from your word that even though things are fluid and unstable, Lord, you are always the constant in our lives. And Lord, you ask us now to meet you in and through prayer. And so I pray that our time together would be instructive, encouraging, and calming to our souls as we look to you for strength during this time. So guide me now as I handle your word, that I be careful and clear, and we commit everything to you now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The passage that comes to us today is from Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Let me read this to you from the ESV translation. Paul writes, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, 
that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Colossians 4, 2 through 6. In our passage today, we're going to be looking at three action words that come straight from the passage. And here's our outline. Number one, pray. Number two, walk. And number three, speak. Pray, walk, speak. And what we're going to notice in just a moment is that that is the, not only the order, but that is the priority for how we should approach this. So let's begin with the first point, pray. In verses 2 through 4, we're not only exhorted to pray, but we're also exhorted on how to pray. So let me begin with that first part in verse 2. It says, continue steadfastly in prayer. Continue steadfastly in prayer. The idea here means to be able to be close at hand or to pay attention to this, to persevere in an ongoing way. The New American Standard, another translation, uses the word devote, devote yourselves to prayer. And what I want you to see in this first statement of pray is that it is a command. It's not just a suggestion, but it's something that we need to take seriously and actually do in our Christian lives. But the way that it's written is also important because it not only asks us to do this, but it says to continue steadfastly. That's the ongoing nature of prayer. You know, when we think about prayer, there's so many passages in the scripture that call us to pray at all times. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, pray at all times in the spirit. Or how about this one? 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. If that isn't clear, I don't know what is. But that's because the nature of prayer is something that will cultivate our relationship with God Almighty. Did you get that? It will cultivate our relationship with God Almighty. So I often think about other relationships that I have in my life, with my wife, with my kids, with my friends. I think if you are honest, you would understand that when you cultivate a relationship, communication is key to that. And it's not just a one-time communication where you say, hi, how's it going? Good day today. No, it's not that. It's ongoing. It's continually to communicate. Many of us communicate through text or communicate through private messages or direct messages. And it's not just one word. It's an ongoing thing. When we cultivate our relationship with God to continue steadfastly in prayer is the way to build that up. And during this time, we certainly need to do this. Why so? Well, some background here on the book of Colossians. Paul is currently in prison, so this letter is called a prison epistle. In so doing, we can be clear that the circumstances were not ideal, similar to today, right? Many of us feel like we're imprisoned, that we can't go out, we can't do the things that we would have normally wanted to do. But here's the point that I want you to understand. Paul is saying despite the circumstances, he can continue to be steadfast in his prayer. And the reason why is despite what's going on around us, we can still have a vertical relationship with God through the means of prayer, which is communication. So let me ask you this question. How's it going with your prayer? How's it going with your communication with God? Are you cultivating that relationship? And again, relationships are two-way, right? God certainly communicates to us through his word. How are you doing in reciprocating to God to cultivate that relationship? Well, it doesn't stop there. Look at the next part of verse 2. It says, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Another way of saying that is that we need to be alert in our prayers. Again, this is an important idea because sometimes... When we pray, we don't remember what we pray because we're not in a good place, both in posture or perhaps in the time of day that we pray. When I was in college, I was starting to get serious about my faith when I was in college. It was a wonderful time. And so I started reading the Bible more diligently, and I wanted to pray more than I was praying. I was just praying at meals, basically. So I said, I'm going to spend some time praying. 
Now that's a good thing. But I made two fatal mistakes. One, when I chose to pray, late at night, right before I went to bed. And two, the posture of what I took when I was praying. We had these triple bunk beds in our fraternity. I was part of Alpha Gamma Omega, a Christian fraternity. And I would be on the bottom bunk. But right before I would go to bed, I would take the horizontal position and start to pray. Now, my intentions were good, my desire was pure, but I'll tell you what happened. Because of when I prayed and the posture that I took, that horizontal prayer lasted for about eight hours because quickly I went into unconsciousness. Oftentimes I wake up the next morning, oh, amen. But I wasn't alert, I wasn't watchful, I didn't even know what I prayed for because quickly I went into REM as opposed to knowing what I prayed for. When we are watchful, when we are alert, not only will we take note of what we prayed, but we will also realize when God answers it because we remembered what we prayed. That's the second part of that verse. It says, with thanksgiving. You realize this, that God always answers prayer. Let me, let me say that clearly. God always answers prayer. Now, you may not think so. You may disagree. But let me say this. Sometimes God's answer to our prayer is no. And the reason why is because that's not what he wills. And that's because he knows what is best for us. But here's my point. No is still an answer. I have prayed for many things in the past. And I thought, this is the right thing. But then when God said no, and that was his clear answer, I looked back and I said, wow, I am so glad that God said no. Isn't it true, friends, that God knows more than we do? And isn't it also true that God has our back, that he's looking out for our best interest? And so from his vantage point, eternity, don't you think he knows more than us? Don't you think he knows better than us? I think he does. And that's why when we pray that we are watchful and alert, that we can also say, thank you, Lord, because he will never give us something that's bad for us. He will only do something that is good for us. And again, remember the circumstance where Paul was. He was imprisoned. And yet, despite that, Paul says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful, and being thankful. Well, he doesn't stop there. Not only are we to pray, but the second point is we are to walk. Verse 5 says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. The metaphor for walk here, often in the scripture, is the equivalent for the word live. So to walk or to live. So the Christian walk is the Christian life. And now what Paul is doing is he's exhorting us to live wisely, specifically towards outsiders, unbelievers, making the best or the most of our opportunities. Now let me define wisdom for you just carefully before we begin, okay? Wisdom is simply knowledge that is applied towards skilled living. And biblical wisdom, which comes from above, begins with the fear of God. Read through the Psalms, read through the Proverbs. Proverbs. It'll say the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, which does not mean, oh, I'm afraid of God, but it means, that, oh, I'm in awe of God. I revere him. I respect him because who, of who he is. And when we know who he is and when we approach his throne, which he invites us towards, we will be overwhelmed with God's glory, with his holiness, and with his love. And when we meet him, when we spend time with him, with prayer, and then we try to walk like him by mimicking him, that's going to impact how we are so that it would impact those who are on the outside, i.e. unbelievers. When that happens, that's going to manifest and spill itself in all kinds of ways. Obviously, right now, if you watch the world, it's polarized. It's polarized politically, racially, as well as ideologically. 
You can't go out on a social platform or a media like Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok without seeing something that's really like, whoa, that's really toxic. But the question I would ask you is this. If you are a follower of Christ, are you walking in context and in accordance to the gospel? And I remind you, the word gospel means good news. In other words, is your presence on social media good news? Is what you say and how you carry yourself in your conversations with one another, is it good news? Would an unbeliever look at you and say, wow, what you bring to me is good news? That should be what happens when we choose to walk in wisdom with God. And so I want to challenge you during this time where we're all locked down and imprisoned, that not only in what you say and what you do, but you would become good news. That you would draw upon the wisdom from God so that when you walk in front of outsiders, they would see the beauty and majesty of the gospel because your life is centered on Christ and on the good news of Jesus. That leads to our third point. We are to pray we are to walk, and then finally, we are to speak. In Colossians 4, 6, it says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that, that you may know how you ought to answer each person. This last command is quite interesting because it's really focused on not only what we say, but again, on how we say it. And Paul is very clear, not only here, but in other passages, of what our speech needs to be geared towards. For example, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Paul writes, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up, as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Did you get that? No corrupting talk, but only such that is good for building up, that it may give grace to those who hear. When Paul talks in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, he says two aspects of our speech. It says, let your speech always be gracious, that it's giving grace to those who hear, that it blesses people. The loving kindness of God is being poured out most easily and probably most frequently through our speech. But not only does it need to be gracious, but it says, second part of verse 6, seasoned with salt. Salt in the first century was a preservative. They didn't have refrigerators or ice boxes like we do today. So if they had a piece of meat to keep it from rotting, they would put salt on it to keep it preserved. It's interesting because Jesus in Matthew 5 uses that metaphor as well. We are to be salt and light to the world. Light in darkness and salt probably to preserve at least the moral nature of society for the time. And here it's saying now that the salt is applied to our speech. Does your speech, is it gracious? Is your speech preserving or is it destroying? Is it rotting? Is it corrupting? You see, again, this goes back to the wisdom from the previous point. If we walk in wisdom, I want to suggest to you that we will be able to speak accordingly with grace and with salt. And the last part of verse 6 says that you would also know how to answer each person. As a Bible prof, I get asked a lot of questions all the time. And to be honest with you, I don't know the answers. So as soon as I get asked a question and I'm thinking, oh, but this is going to be tough, I pray and I say, Lord, give me wisdom beyond what I know so that I would be able to give both a gracious and a seasoned um, uh, answer to those who ask. Perhaps you have friends who are asking you about Christianity, or they're looking and seeing, well, what are some of these things that are going on? It doesn't make sense. I, I hope that you'll stand up for Christ in the church and for the cause of Christ in the gospel, and that you not add more fuel to the fire, but actually that you'd be more gracious and that your speech would be seasoned with salt. Now let's put all of this together as we come to three application aspects for our outline of pray walk, and speak. I want you to notice three things. Here's the first thing I want you to notice. The sequence of the three actions are prioritized. What I mean by this 
is we are to pray first, then walk, and then speak. And that's the title of our message, right? Pray first. Why? Because we need God's help. So that once we ask him, then we'll know how to walk, and then we'll certainly know how to speak. Isn't it unfortunate that we reverse that more often than not? We speak and then say something dumb. We walk and take a misstep. And then we say, oh, Lord, bless this. Look, don't be Presbyterian and just sprinkle a little bit of prayer on that. Be Baptist. Immerse it. Dunk it in prayer so that you start with prayer so you'll know how to walk and then you'll know how to speak. So prayer is the priority. That's the order of the passage. And I want to suggest that's the order of your practice. Number two, the second thing that I want you to see is this. Don't just stop after you pray. You see, the, the sequence continues. Pray, walk, speak. It doesn't just say pray and that's it. Some of you may have prayed this prayer. I, I know that I prayed this prayer in the past. I'd say, Lord, help me to grow. And then I go back to sleep. Well, God can do miracles, but he's not going to get you out of bed against your will. If you're wanting to grow and you say sincerely, Lord, help me to grow, then walk in that and then speak to that so that it doesn't cut short the sequence. James says faith without works is what? It's dead. So I want to encourage you to lay into that and as a result that you would grow spiritually. So prayer is the priority. Don't just stop with prayer. And here's the third thing. We need to create a rhythm. A rhythm that is based on our training more than our trying. Let me explain that to you. A lot of us are trying to do Christianity, but that's not the goal of it, right? It's, that's religion. We need to be training under the coaching of Christ under the assistance of the Holy Spirit, and probably together as a team with other believers. Maybe you could do this together to build a rhythm, a workout partner spiritually, so that you would train together. Obviously, if you've ever run a marathon, you don't try to run 26.2 miles. You train and build up to it. So maybe right now, some of the things you could be doing virtually through Zoom or other means is to meet together and pray. And then maybe the walk would be meet together and read the word. And then maybe you could speak encouragement, and prayer requests, and exhortations to one another. Pray, speak. Pray, walk, speak. And if we can do that together, then hopefully you'll grow. One of the rhythms that I've been trained to do, and I've been doing it since the beginning of January in 2020, is I've been journaling. I've journaled in the past, but I haven't journaled recently. But I'm happy to say up to this day, I haven't missed a single day because I've been training. I've been building a rhythm. My wife is journaling. I'm journaling. And again, we share this together. Who are some partners that you can work out together spiritually in prayer, in walking, and in speaking? I want to encourage you to be involved together in your community. That's why we're here. And especially during this time, even though we're physically separated, we are not separated both virtually and spiritually. Here's our central truth as we close our time together. God invites us to pray first so that we can live our lives wisely and speak graciously in order to be a Christ-centered witness to a watching world. One more time. God invites us to pray first so that we can live our lives wisely and speak graciously in order to be a Christ-centered witness to a watching world. Anchor Community Church, I want to wish you blessings. Thank you, Pastor Ben. I hope you and your family are well. And I pray that you would grow in grace and in truth for the glory of God. Let me pray. Father, thank you again for this time together. Thank you for the opportunity to speak your words. And I pray that your spirit would help us to not only hear, but to apply these truths in our lives so that we would pray first, we would walk in wisdom, and we would speak with grace and with seasoned with salt to people who need encouragement with the good news of Christ and the gospel. So thank you again for this time and for this day. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you and hope to see you soon. Take care.
God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. I
Forever all my days I will love you God God I look to you I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision To see things like you do God I look to you You're where my help comes from Give me wisdom You know just what to do
rescue me, sought me out, set me free, and your never-ending love is all I need, it's all I need. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you hear us and that, Lord, we get to pray to you. And so, Lord, would you help us with your Holy Spirit to slow down our thoughts, um, our lives, our days, Father God, that we would um, ask for your help, that we would ask for your wisdom that's the first thing that we do, Father God, not the last. God, would you help us to be just a people, a generation that trusts in you, God, and, and asks for you and your help every single day. So God, we await for you, and God, we thank you once again. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.